بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولاه ما بعد This is our 26th lesson going through the book مختصر أبي شجاع الفقه على مذهب الإمام الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى أوثب القاضي أبو الحسين أحمد بن الحسين بن أحمد الأصفهاني رحمه الله تعالى الحمد لله We are still in كتاب البيوع And we have arrived at فصل ويصح السلم حالا ومؤجلا فيما تكامل فيه خمس شرائط And so in this first part of the lesson we're going to be talking about بيع السلم Also you can call it بيع السلف طيب And so essentially بيع السلم is We briefly touched upon it in the previous lesson as a type of transaction وبيع شيء موصوف في الذمة Right as a transaction of something or the selling of something that you have described طيب and, and, and you have described it upon your neck and so essentially what Bayr al-Salam is is that you make a full payment as a buyer for um, a, a specific good whether it be agricultural products and it's usually agricultural products طيب and, and it's even more general in, in today's world in modern finance most of the transactions that are performed um, generally fall under uh, salam. and so what happens is that you make a full payment in advance for what for specific goods and this specific good will generally be delivered at a future date or at a um, agreed upon date طيب. however this transaction in order for it to be valid as we mentioned in the previous lesson it must be fully specified it must be fully described and so this commodity that you want to um, uh, purchase or that there is uh, this is the commodity that's being uh, put up on the table that's going to be what um, sold from one side to the other it must be um, fully specified i.e no ambiguity that could potentially lead to some form of dispute and of course according to the madhab and so uh, uh, let's say I go to a shop and I say here you go 3,000 pound I want a camel so you've given him 3,000 pound and you've said to him I want a camel that's four years old it has a weight x kilograms it has a height x feet it's a camel that belongs to this specific region and it has a specific color so these are what accurate um, uh, descriptions that you have given for the item that you want and you've given him the money i.e. the one who you're going to buy this product from and you've said that I want it by X date and it doesn't matter whether the X date is right now or at a later specified date method and you say here you go £3,000 I want a camel that's four years old it has weight X height X from this specific region with this specific color I want it by November the um, 30th i.e. next week or I want it by three months from now at specific and you come to me at a specific place to to give me this product if you do it in this format and of course with the meeting of the conditions that we're going to be speaking about we call this bayr as-salam and it is a valid form of transaction and so the author he said here the bayr as-salam the forward sale as they call it in the English language it is valid both immediately and if it's what delayed so the immediate meaning saying I want X camel that uh, I want a, a camel that's four years old with a white with, with a weight X a height X you can even change the example to a phone method um, although that's according to the madhab there's a little bit to discuss concerning that we'll talk about that later when we talk about the conditions but let's keep it to um, a camel for now I want a camel that's four years old it has weight X height X um, from specific region um, and it has a specific color and I want it by now that's Bayr salam as well or at a later specified date i.e. I want it next week or next month on this specific date at this specific time meeting me at X place or meeting me at Z place طيب. if you do it like this and you've accurately described the pro product that you want such that there is no potential ambiguity that can uh, cause potential dispute then you can call this a valid forward sale contract however in order for the valid contract to be or in order for the bayr sale to be valid there must be five conditions that uh, that have to be met as we will see inshallah ta'ala in the next slide but this is just a brief overview of what salam is with um, a classic example so here now the author rahimahullah he mentions the conditions the five conditions that need to be found in order for a salam contract to be valid number one and yakuna mavbutan bisifah meaning the item that's being purchased uh, it must be um, fully specified so the description must be accurate 
such that there is no ambiguity that can potentially lead to dispute. So if you can't do this, then the Salem contract will not be valid. And the example we gave in the previous slide applies here. For example, you go to um, a person and you say, I want um, a camel that's four years old. So you're giving it a, an age. You've given it um, a height, a weight. It's height X, weight X. It, um, it belongs to a specific region. So it comes from that specific region. It has a specific color. These are all accurate descriptions that you've given for that camel, such that when you see it or when the seller brings it to you, you are able to then what? Use those descriptions that you've made to see is this description um, or are these descriptions found within the product that he has brought me. And then you are able to easily judge. There is no potential ambiguity that could potentially lead to to dispute between you as a buyer and, and the seller. Why? Because what the sifa is not bought. The sifa is precise. It's been fully specified. There is no lips. There is no ambiguity. The next two conditions, the illah behind it is the first condition. And you see it inshallah. So the second condition is Meaning that this item must be of one genus Without it being mixed with other things And the classic Shafi'i example that is given in Shafi'i manuals Is what we call the food type known as harisa So if you go to a Yemeni restaurant And you've, you've heard of uh, harisa Harisa is a type of food Consists of soup and water and meat and wheat That's been all cooked together right? In order to produce this, um, this staple food known as harisa now, as you can see here, this word, this food, harisa, it's made up of different food items. Soup, meat, water, wheat. Now, can you fully specify the amount of meat that you want? Can you fully specify the amount of soup that you want? Can you fully specify the amount of water that you want? Can you fully specify the amount of wheat that you want? You can't really do that, right? You can't really do that. And so if someone wants to go to the Yemeni restaurant and say, here's two pounds, bring me harisa tomorrow at 4 p.m., طيب. now, this harisa is of multiple food types. And none of them can be quantified or precisely or fully specified such that there is no ambiguity and there, is, there can be no potential dispute. You can't do that. And so um, uh, this kind of transaction will not be considered a valid salam contraction. Why? Because it is what? Uh, different food types and they are mixed together. اختلط, right? And so the condition is أن يكون جنسا واحدا, That this item must be of one jins like the camel. The camel is one jins. It's quite easy for you to fully specify what kind of camel you are looking for. Likewise with the phone, even though the phone is made up of different many elements, right, cobalt and this and that, many different elements, the phone, right, glass and so on. طيب. However, the uh, the iPhone or the phone, it's fully specified. Everything has what? Specifications. It's very easy for, uh, there is no potential what? Ambiguity in the description of the of the phone or uh, in the specifications of the of the phone and likewise with the with the camel but with food types like harisa or method uh, and halwa and so on it's very difficult for you to fulfill this condition طيب. the third condition also you can't have an item that has been put into the fire such that it becomes more crisp and this applies mainly in food items like meat or bread why because you can't fully specify the level of crispness or the level of of, of, of cookedness that you want accurately such that there is no potential for dispute or ambiguity, right? The bread, if you have methane, let's say you go into a bread shop and you said, I want, um, I'll give you 10 pounds and I want uh, this amount of bread, right? Now, this bread that's been put into the oven, right, uh, that's been put under fire, you don't know the level of crispness that you want. You can't physically or you know, precisely quantify the amount of crispness or the, the, the amount of uh, uh, cookedness uh, level um, or level of, of crispy nature of the bread. You, you can't fully specify that. And so um, because this food has been put into the oven in order to make it more crisp and more cooked and, and, and worthy of being sold and you can't accurately quantify such that there is no ambiguity, such that there is no dispute. When you see the bread, yes, this is how I wanted it. But uh, because there is no uh, uh, f uh, yani precise specification, because of the because of the fact that you can't do so because you're putting it into the fire. Say you put ten amounts of bread or ten um, ten breads into the into the oven. Not every single one of them will come out the same in terms of crispness, right? And so as salam fil khubz. salam is not valid. When it comes to khubz that's been put into the fire or put into the oven for uh, for the uh, purpose of, of heating it up and cooking it and so on. So you can't, um, uh, as the author of Allah mentioned, one of the conditions that must be fulfilled in order for Bayar Salam to be considered valid is that this item must not have been put into the fire in order to cook it or in order to change it from one situation that it was in into another situation.
طيب the next condition وألا يكون معينا i.e. this um, item that's going to be put under what we call al-Muslim fih right uh, uh, this item that's being that's undergoing the the, the the salam deal it must not be something specific in and of itself for example you go to the shop and you say I want this specific item of clothing that's present here I want to buy it on a salam contract because bay is salam as we mentioned in the previous lesson it's what bay shay'in mawsufin fi dhimma you have to uh, understand that bay salam is built upon the premise of something that's not yet present so you're saying that I want um, this camel that's four years old that has X wide, X weight, X height um, from a specific region with a specific color. This item is not here yet. You can say I want it right now or you can say I want it later, but the item itself is not here. You're not saying I want this item of clothing or this camel over there or this sheep over there. If you say I want this sheep over there or this camel over there or this uh, يعني, item of clothing right here in front of us, then this is not being a salam. This is rather being a Mushahada. So that's an important point to understand as well. Number five, ولا من معينين. What does this mean? What this means is you can't. Uh, the item cannot be something that is in and of itself, or it cannot be from something. So uh, the the fourth condition was ولا يكون معينا. It must not be something in and of itself. معين. Number five, ولا من معين. Neither can it. Neither cannot. Neither it cannot be from something that is in and of itself. معين. For example, someone says. I want to buy one kilogram of these dates. So we have these dates that are present here. We can see it. It's specific, right? It is muayyan. I've specified this date or this um, these amounts or these dates, and I say I want a portion of those dates on a salam contract. You can't do that. Why? Because this is muayyan, and you're taking something from. You're taking a portion of a muayyan. Likewise, you can't say, مثلا, I want. Uh, مثلا, you go to a sweet shop مثلا, and you say that there's a bunch of sweets on the table and you say I want um, 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 2% or 3% or I want um, um, 1 kilograms worth of these sweets لا, you can't do that why? because this is what? this is not بيع معين this is not بيع سلم rather it's بيع عين مشاهدة and بيع عين مشاهدة is one form of transaction and بيع سلم is another form of transaction so these five conditions must be fulfilled in order for as the author rahimahullah mentioned, ويصح سلم حالا ومؤجلا فيما تكامل فيه خمس خمسة شرائط. Five conditions must be fulfilled. Five conditions must be found, and these are the five conditions in order for the salam contract to be deemed valid. Allah Taala Adam. So in the previous slide, we spoke about the conditions that must be found in the product itself that is valid for it to undergo a salam contract. In this slide, we're going to talk about the conditions that must be fulfilled on either side, on both sides of the of the deal. They also have to come with conditions in order for the salam contract to be deemed valid. And so the first condition is أن يصفه بعد ذكر جنسه ونوعه بالصفات التي يختلف بها الثمن. So here, Abu uh, Shuja he mentions that the one who is now going to um, request the item, he must specify, number one, what genus is this product? Is it a phone? Is it a camel? Is it clothing? And then when you do that, you have to also specify the type that falls under this genus. Is it an iPhone? Is it a Samsung? Is it a qamis? Is it a thawb? Is it trousers? And then you have to follow that up with specific descriptions highlighting each one that may potentially cause a change in the price if you were to leave out this description. So for example, if you were to say, I want um, a three-year-old camel or a four-year-old camel. Now, the price between a three-year-old camel and a four-year-old camel varies. Generally speaking, a three-year-old camel is cheaper than a four-year-old camel. Or the opposite. طيب. So this is a description that causes a variation in the price. If you say I want an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 10, the two prices differ. And so this is a condition or this is a description that you have to mention. Because if you were to let go of this description, if you weren't to mention this description, there will be what? A variation in the price. And so if there is any variation or any description that can cause a potential change in the price, then this description has to be mentioned. So that's a very important condition to, to know. The second condition is, وَأَنْ يَذْكُرَ قَدْرَهُ بِمَا يَنْفِي الْجَهَالَةَ عَنْهُ 
And so this is an important point. If the item is something that is weighted, then you must mention the weight that you want. If the item, it's, let's say, dates. And so you have to specify the amount of you know, kilos that you want in dates. I want 10 sa' of dates. I want, um, and of course, you have to further describe the dates that you want, right? But you have to mention the amount, right? If the item has a volume, then you have to mention the, the volume that you want. 12 liters of Coca-Cola or 12 liters and so on they have to mention the the um the the volume or method and let's say um you have if, if the if the um if the item has a count you have to state its count do you want seven camels or eight camels or nine camels you have to mention these descriptions now the qadr the amount that you have to mention it must be sufficient such that ignorance is uplifted meaning the one who's going to bring you this product i.e the seller he must have sufficient information concerning the weight, the volume, the amount, um, that such that he is no longer ignorant of what you want, i.e. he knows what, what you mean, specifically, as though the item is there in front of you, or in front of him. طيب? So you have to give sufficient information such that ignorance of the seller is uplifted, so he knows what it is that you, that you are seeking for to the T. طيب? That's number two. Number three, وَإِنْ كَانَ مُؤَجَّلًا ذَكَرَ وَقْتَ مَحِلِّهِ The item that you have requested, if you've mentioned the delayed date, then you have to specify that delayed date. You have to mention it. So if you want your item on the 5th of November or the 5th of December or the 5th of Dhul Qa'ida or the 5th of Dhul Hijjah or any random date that you want, you have to specify that date. If it's what? Mu'ajjal. If it's halal, then of course it's right now, today. That, that, that's not a problem. But if it's mu'ajjal, and if you want it as a delayed um, date, then you have to um, uh, uh, mention this date. So you say, I want this camel that is a three-year-old camel of weight X, of height X, from this specific region, with that specific color. I want it on the 13th of December at X time. You have to mention that date in the meeting to the, the seller. So you know that this is the day that you want it. Good. The next condition is when يَكُونَ مَوْجُودًا عند الْإِسْتِحْقَاقِ فِي الْغَالِبِ That this item which you have requested, it must be usually capable of being brought by the seller as by that date that you that, that you have stipulated. So essentially, um, you've given the um, the the seller the correct conditions um, such that he is able to bring you. Usually, he's able to bring you this item by that stipulated date. However, if you give him so many conditions such that it is impossible or close to impossible for this individual to find the requested item that you have requested before that stipulated date, then this um, contract, this Salam contract will not be, will not be valid. So that's why he said, In most cases or in, in the usual sense. So let's say, مثلاً, I give him so many conditions such that it's impossible for him to find such a product in the market before that stipulated date, then this Salam contract will not be will not be valid. طيب. The next condition The person has to mention the place in which the transaction will, will take place. Right? Um, will you bring the item to my home or are you going to deliver it to your your shop? So I'm gonna to have to come and collect it from your shop, or are you going to send it somewhere? So you have to mention the Mawdi al Qabd. The where am I going to um, collect this this product that you're going to bring to me by this certain date, right? You have to also mention that, that has to be clear. And you, as you can see, there are so many conditions. And the reason why there are so many conditions is because Bayr al-Salam is what? It's essentially a, 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 a contract that um, uh, we have to remove any, and we have to ensure that there is no room for potential dispute later on, right? So giving these amount of conditions, given these so many conditions, which are eight here, five in the previous slide, so 13 in total, so these conditions are there in order to remove any potential for what? For dispute or ambiguity. Good. Uh, the next condition, وَأَنْ يَكُونَ الثَّمَنُ مَعْلُومًا Now this um, item, the price of it must be known on both sides. You must know the price of this item and you must come to an agreement concerning it. The next one, وَأَنْ يَتَقَابَضَ قَبْلَ التَّفَرُّقِ i.e. this money must be received by the owner of by the seller before the meeting ends. التَّقَابُضُ قَبْلَ التَّفَرُّقِ So the money uh, must be given from the from the buyer to the seller before the meeting in which the salam contract is being devised ends. And this is the whole purpose of your salam. It's a forward payment. You pay instantly and you get your product later, right? 
And so this is essentially the main point of Selim. Uh, and that's why the money must be there and it must be given to the seller قبل التفرق, قبل التفرق, before the meeting ends. And as for the final condition, when يكون عقد السلم ناجزا لا يدخله خيار الشرط. خيار الشرط cannot enter into a Selim contract. As we know, خيار الشرط, we took in the previous um, lesson, right, that you have uh, stipulated in the contract, you have three days for what? Uh, for you to return the item for whatever reason. You have three days from the point of contact, from the point that the contract has been uh, drawn up, you have three days to return the item if you wish. طيب. This does not enter into a Selim contract. This is not allowed in a Selim contract. The only type of khiyar that is allowed in the Selim contract is, generally speaking, khiyar al-majlis. Khiyar al-majlis can occur in the Selim contract. So, let's say you go into a shop, you Drop the Salam contract And then يعني, before you uh, break Or before you end the meeting You say you renege on the deal There's no problem in that But خيار الشرط does not enter into عقد السلام عقد السلام is a contract which is what? You say it's a heavy contract طيب. As soon as you make the agreement خلاص, You have to abide by it Both sides have to abide by it Without any potential for what? For خيار الشرط You're not given that option To renege on the deal within within three days. طيب. So as you can see there are a number of conditions and of course the Shafi'iyah are far more restrictive when it comes to Bayu Salam compared to the other madahib uh, and the reason why as I mentioned is because of what to ensure that there is no room for potential dispute and bickering on um, on either side. طيب. Then Yuthar Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said Faslun wa kullu ma jaza bay'uhu jaza rahnuhu and so the author, rahimahullah, he is now talking about another mas'ala pertaining to al-rahn. And al-rahn is essentially what we call collateral. And we find it in the Qur'an, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ وَلَمْ تَجِدُ كَاتِبًا فَرُوهُنٌ مَقْبُوضًا And let's say, let's give an example to clarify it. Let's say I go to a brother and I say to him, can I have a thousand pound loan? However, this brother doesn't trust me to avoid defaulting on that loan, meaning he doesn't trust me to pay back this loan. And so he says to me, give me a guarantee, give me collateral as security. And then you say to him, okay, here's my car, or here's my phone, hold it as security. And so if I don't bring your money back, you can take that item and sell it for yourself, and that will be what? That will be um, the collateral for the damages that you've obtained from me not paying back that £1,000 loan that you took, that I took from you. طيب. And so that is essentially what ar is. And then he said, the author, rahimahullah, he said, وَكُلُّ مَا جَازَ بَيْعُهُ جَازَ رَهْنُهُ Meaning that anything that a person can put up for sale, it can be used as security in a rahn transaction. For example, a phone can be sold, a car can be sold, a book can be sold. And so all of those things can be used in a rahn situation. Why? Because, as I mentioned in the example, the one who gave you the loan, he needs a guarantee. So that um, a guarantee, a physical guarantee, which he can actually sell in the marketplace in order to get his money back. If you are unable, if you are unable to pay him back from that loan that you took from him, right? And so, with this, of course, those things that are haram for a person that that, that is haram for a person to sell. For example, let's say um, I say to you here, uh, let me take a thousand pounds from you as a loan and take my child as a guarantee. This is something which is not valid. Why? Because you can't sell a free person, and the child is free. You can't sell a a child in the marketplace, right? Likewise, method, and I say to you, um, uh, uh, here's some alcohol, right, as a guarantee, or here's my um, my my uh, a whole box of alcohol, method, and worth. Let's say uh, there are very very expensive forms of wine, right? Um, so you see, you give them an expensive bottle of wine, they may say that's my collateral, or that take that as collateral. Now that I say, why? Because you can't sell this wine in the marketplace because it's haram, as we took in the previous lessons, طيب. Then the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, جَازَ رَهْنُهُ فِي الدُّيُونِ إِذَا اسْتَقَرَّ ثُبُوتُهَا فِي الذِّمَّةِ Good. And so rahan, the contract of a rahan, it's only applicable in cases where there is a loan taking place. So, uh, uh, there must be a loan taking place in order for what? In order for the rahan situation to apply. Now, it doesn't matter whether the loan has already been completed, like in the example we, we gave previously. For example, I go to my brother, I say to my brother, give me a thousand pounds as a loan. And he says, okay, I'll give you the thousand pound loan, but I don't trust you, so give me a guarantee. And he gives me the thousand pound loan and I give him the guarantee. That's, of course, a complete um, case of Rahan, right? However, let's say we're in a Selim situation, like we took in the previous slides. So, for example, um, uh, I give him the money for the product. And we made a Selim contract. So the product, I'm, going to, I'm only going to recover that product when? 
I'm only going to recover that product in, um, in, in, in let's say next month. And so in this case, can I ask a guarantee from the seller? So yani in the first case, the guarantee was being given to the to the seller from the buyer. Now in this case, in the selling case, the guarantee is being given to the buyer by the seller. So it's the yani other way around. This is also valid in the Shafi'i Madhab. Yani Jumhur Fuqha illa al-Hanabila. Right? And so what we call Ar-Rahn fi Dain al-Salam Jaizun. Right? And so um, let's say I go to the marketplace and we come up with a Salam contract. And so I give him uh, the money and he says, okay, you'll get your product in X date that we have already stipulated. And I say to him, okay, I, I don't trust you. So give me a, con- a guarantee. O oh, seller, give me a guarantee. Um, and he gives me a guarantee. هذا لا بأس به في المذهب. As the author, رحمه الله تعالى, mentioned, إذا استقر ثبوتها في الذمة. So he mentioned the case of the of the dhimma, which is of course related to um bayr salam, bayr salam, bayr shayin mausuf in fi dhimma as we took previously. So there's no problem in that according to the Shafi'i school. طيب. Then the author رحمه الله تعالى he said, وللراهن الرجوع فيه ما لم يقبضه. And so a person can renege on the rahan deal as long as it was not collected from the creditor, right? And so we have the creditor, the one who's giving the debt, and we have the debtor, the one who's fallen into the debt and so the rahin is the one who is what who is given the guarantee he's the one who's giving the guarantee right a rahin he now can renege on that deal he can say i'm not going to give you my my guarantee i'm not going to give you this is collateral right as long as what as long as the creditor has not had the item in his possession and so let's say method i go to the marketplace again i say to the brother here's a uh, here's my phone as guarantee give me a hundred pounds loan and i give him the phone such that it becomes in his Position and I get the hundred pound loan such that it becomes into my position. In this case, khalas, the, the Rahan deal has fallen into place and you can't renege on such a deal. But let's say I say it, uh, I, I utter those words, I say, I'll give you my phone as collateral, you give me a hundred pound loan. And whilst we were um, talking, I renege on that deal and he hasn't yet, i.e., the creditor hasn't yet taken the, um, the phone in his possession. So, this case, although we agreed uh, earlier on in the meeting. But because he hasn't taken possession of the phone yet, he cannot, uh, I can, I have the option to renege on the deal. And I can do that. And of course, if, يعني, um, let's say, the, um, the, uh, the, the, the creditor um, says, um, okay, I also renege on the deal, I'm not going to give you my money, خلاص. Then, then the deal has ended. I go back with my, my collateral and he goes back with his, his money. The deal has, has broken. And that's of course, يعني بديه. طيب. Then the author, رحمه الله تعالى, he said, وَلَا يَضْمَنُهُ, وَلَا يَضْمَنُهُ, وَلَا يَضْمَنُهُ الْمُرْتَهِنُ إِلَّا بِالتَّعَدِّي Okay. This is an important point. Now, let's say we completed the deal. So now I went to the marketplace. I said to the brother, here's my phone as collateral. Give me a hundred pounds. Or, or let's say I, I need a hundred pound loan and he says to me, okay, but I need collateral. I give him my phone as a collateral. I take the money. So now we've entered into a Rahan contract. Now this person's now uh, holding on to my, 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 my phone as collateral, right? And I've taken his money as a loan. Now this creditor who collected the collateral, he's not responsible for compensating me uh, or compensating the debtor if the collateral becomes damaged in any way, shape or form or it becomes lost. Unless, illa bit-ta'addi, unless there is what ta'addi, there is a form of trespassing that takes place. So for example, if the creditor did not put the collateral in a secure place and so the, the, the phone method was not hidden away, he just put it on the top of the table and he didn't give any care in terms of protecting it, putting it, putting it in a safe place and so the thief came and took the, um, the, uh, the, the item or the item became destroyed. If this occurs, this is the form of ta'addi, and so now the, uh, the one who is the creditor must pay back and must give compensation for the one who originally owned that, that item. طيب. However, if you are not, uh, if there is no trespassing, if there is no ta'addi from you as the, as the creditor, and so for example, and still the collateral uh, was destroyed, for example, let's say an armed robber came and he robbed your home or he robbed your place of work or your, your marketplace or your, your shop. And uh, yani within this action, the item that was considered rahan had been taken, right? Or it had been destroyed. If this occurs, then you have to swear by Allah as the creditor, you go to the Qadi, you swear by Allah that this was the case and that this happened. And if you do that, then you will not be held responsible for compensating um, the debtor. 
Um, now, when it comes to يعني, uh, this entire issue, um, it depends upon the level of excuse that you provide. If the excuse is hidden or apparent, then the hukum changes, right? So if the excuse is apparent, for example, um, uh, a fire took place, a fire took hold, and this fire was witnessed by everyone in the marketplace or by a number of people in the marketplace, and the rahan that was in there was also lost in that in that carnage. And so if this was an, if this occurred, then what happens is, first and foremost, you have to bring a witness to prove that, uh, indeed, there was a fire. That took place, and then you have to also swear by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to prove that um, that rahan was lost in that specific carnage caused by that specific fire. And if you come with these two points, then you are not held responsible for compensating your your debtor for his item that has been destroyed. However, if the excuse is hidden, for example, let's say you say that I had the phone in my pocket or I had the phone in my safe and it was stolen or it was uh, it was it was um it was taken or an armed robber came, then in this case you have to what you have to swear by Allah that in Indeed, um, that is what happened because it's an excuse which is what, which is uh, not so apparent. Rather, it's quite hidden. For example, let's say you are on the bus. You say that yes, I had the phone in my pocket, but then I went to my marketplace and I couldn't find the phone any any longer. This is an excuse, but it's a hidden excuse. It's not really apparent, right? You can't really bring an ex- a witness for this, right? And so you have to swear by Allah. You come with what al halif right? in front of the qadi. And if you do this, then you are no longer held responsible for compensating that uh, debtor. For his item, طيب. However, um, if you are unable to do so, then you have then you are held liable, you are held responsible, and you must give this individual, uh, this debtor, the compensation for his item being being lost. طيب. Then the author, rahimahullah taala, he said, وَإِذَا قَبَضَ بَعْضَ الْحَقِّ لَمْ يَخْرُجْ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الرَّهْنِ حَتَّى يَقْضِيَ جَمِيعَهُ. Is an important point as well. For example, let's say I go to the marketplace, we had a uh, Rahan deal, right? I then came back to him, I said, here's half of the money that I took from you. I want my Rahan back, I want my collateral back. In this case, the uh, creditor can say, no, I'm not going to give you your Rahan back until you pay back the entire amount of money that you took from me as loan. So the only way in which the debtor gets his Rahan back, gets his collateral back, is if what is if he pays back the entirety of the of the debt as the author rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned hadha wallahu a'lam mustafa bi idnillah subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh